Welcome back to another Post Media Iowa Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriock, pleased to be joined today by TSN Hockey Insider Darren Drager. And Darren, I left the bow tie at home and you left your tie in the closet, so we're all good today. We're pretty relaxed, but it's been a difficult road trip for the Senators as we speak today. Matt Murray hurt in Saturday's 8-5 loss to the uh, Arizona Coyotes and now on the injured yeah. list for the seventh time in the 15 months since he came to the Senators. I, I mean, it's it's almost unbelievable. Um, you know, it's, it's a run of bad luck for Matt Murray, obviously, and there's no way of detaching when his game has, has sunk to its lowest um, and then saying, well, okay, it's it's injury-related. It has to be. Of course it is. You know, yep. um, yeah. goaltenders are no different than defense or forward. I mean, when you, when you start playing well consistently, as Matt Murray has for the most part, I mean, a couple of tough outings of late, um, but, you know, you get into that rhythm, and that applies more to goaltending than it does anyone else. So, when you look at his rap sheet from an injury perspective in Ottawa, and I think I read somewhere, what is this now, seven times he's yes. been on injury reserve in the last year and a half. It, yeah. it, it, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, so what is it? You know, is it just bad luck? I mean, it's not conditioning. I mean, every player in the National Hockey League is well conditioned. But, man, he needs something good to go his way. It looked like it was going his way. The Ottawa Senators need him to get back to good health because, you know, your options are closed. You know, if, if, if he can't play net for you, then, you know, he's not going to help you, obviously. But just as important to that is it stops guys like us, Bruce, from talking about the possibility of moving Matt Murray at any point in the future because everybody sees the same thing. They see the inconsistency, but then they see a run of bad luck with a hockey player who can't stay healthy. Well, and, and I guess that's the issue and in, in... – you know, obviously the, the comparisons here have started to Pascal Leclerc because Pascal Leclerc could not stay healthy yeah. here. Um, I, I think that, that when, when they got Matt Murray, I think we both agreed it was a great move. Um, yeah. A two-time Stanley Cup champion. He should be stabilizing this net. There shouldn't be questions, should there, yeah. Darren? Shouldn't be. No, there shouldn't be. And uh, you're right. You know, when, when he arrived in Ottawa, I felt like this was going to be a game changer for Matt Murray. You know, he, you know, even though Marc-Andre Fleury had left <coughs> the Pittsburgh Penguins organization, the city of Pittsburgh, he had moved on through expansion of Vegas. Um, you know, Matt Murray was, was still in the shadow, believe it or not, in that city. So he needed a fresh start. And I thought that he was really going to, to flourish with a change of scenery and a new environment. And he's had more issue than he's had uh, good play and, and, and whatnot. But when you lose a piece like that, it, it really puts a strain uh, you know, on that position throughout the organization, right? Because, you know, you've got a, a bit of a kind of up and down effect with Gustafson um, in the American League with Belleville. And I'll tell you what, Bruce, I, I like I'm more surprised that more people in media aren't talking about Anton Forsberg than yeah. what they are. I mean, I know it's a story in, in Ottawa in the local market. And I actually had somebody I mentioned on a radio pregame last week that I thought that there should be interest in Anton Forsberg. And I got a message back. I won't disclose who the source was, but saying, really? Like who? You know, something along those lines. I'm like, have you watched him play? You know, yeah. I, it feels like he's kind of exercised the demons of that early bad goal or a bad goal against. But now you're in a situation where, well, even if a team were to call, you know, do you move him? How can yeah. you move him with the uncertainty of, of Matt Murray and the fact that you're trying to, to be patient with, with Gustafson and develop that position in a timely way? Well, and, and that's just it. You can't, you can't move him. But can you keep three goalies, no. Darren? Because they've obviously got a decision to make on, on Forsberg. People want them to sign him to, to your contract extension. To me, that makes no sense right now. Yeah. Let him finish the right. year. Let Gustafson finish the year in, in Belleville and and then make your decision, right? Because you're not going to get both yeah. guys through waivers next next September. No, no, no. I'm with you on that. Um, good problems to have, but, but, you know, they are problems. And, you know, having too many goaltenders in your organization, 
uh, certainly at one level, is a challenge. I mean, we just saw that last week, right, with the Edmonton Oilers moving Alex Daylock um, because they had three goalies in uh, Bakersfield, and it's it's just no good. It's awkward yeah. for the players. Um, but I'm with you on 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 Forsberg. Uh, you know, the Sens are in a place where you know they they just can't give assets away per se. But I, I don't know who it was. It might have been Dave Nonis then when, when he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs as general manager, coined the term own rental, right? Um, yeah. And I think that that's been applied time and time again, year after year. You know, we look at some of the players who should be available uh, as pending unrestricted free agents on the market with the trade deadline looming. But then you're sitting there and you're looking at these teams. Dallas comes to mind. And you see that they're a playoff team and you're sitting there going, well, you're not going to get the contract to John Klingberg done no. anytime soon, but there's value in holding on to that player past the trade deadline, you know, trying to lock down that spot. So maybe that applies to Forsberg in the sense too. I mean, we know Ottawa isn't a playoff contending team, but being in the battle as they almost always are, it's huge. It's important for development. And that starts a good competitive team starts with average to above average goaltending. And if well, Forsberg can continue to, to give that in Ottawa, then how do you move him out? But he's obviously, I, I don't see him as a big part of their future down the road either. No. And, you know, I guess we, as we speak today, we're two weeks to the trade deadline, March 21st. Um, and, and the biggest question mark remains Nick Paul. They've had an awful lot of interest in, in Nick Paul. But, uh, you know, you and I have both spoken to Pierre Dorian. We've spoken to Pierre Maguire. We, we've spoken to people in the organization, the coach, DJ Smith. They want to keep Nick Paul. It, it's about finding the right deal and the right fit, isn't it? It has to be. It has to be. And, and that's just as important to the Ottawa Senators as it is to the player. Um, but, you know, you... If you get to a place, and I'm not assuming that they will, I, I, I mean, there has to be some activity that's ongoing, right? It's oh, just yeah. not the style of, of Pierre Dorian to leave it to the 11th hour, right? And nor is it his style to negotiate publicly. So we know that there's something going on. We know yeah, that they're there's talking. a strong... We know they're talking. We know we they've know exchanged they offers, yes. It, exactly. So, And we know that Ottawa feel strongly that Nick Paul is a big part of, of this team moving forward. And Nick Paul has made it clear he wants to stay in Ottawa. So you go through this dance and that's what it is. It's a tad unfortunate for <laughs> Nick Paul that he hasn't been as productive as what he would hope that, that he would have been to this point of the season and the negotiation, but, but that's fine. Ottawa knows what he's, he's capable of. It's just, look, you, you get to a place and you know, let's not assume that this this negotiation isn't going to end with anything other than an extension. But if it gets to a place where they have a breakdown in talks, and, and I don't know that they will, but it does happen that way. You know, if you're ever if you're moving a player like that, you're going to look for that player again, right? Yeah. You know, because yeah. he can do so many things. He's so versatile up front. The chemistry that he has with guys like Connor Brown, et cetera. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's it's imminent. I wouldn't say that it's it's just purely a matter of time. But as we've already mentioned, it sure sounds like there's a healthy appetite from both sides to get something done, and they're just continuing to crunch the numbers. Yeah, it does feel like there's a deal to be made here. One of the big yeah. talking points in Ottawa, other than Nick Paul, though, is the future of Eric Branstrom. And uh, we've seen Eric Branstrom up. We've seen... Eric Branch from down in the minors. Yeah. Uh, he he appears to be here as an NHL player right now. But where does he yeah. fit, Darren? <clears throat> well, look, um, we did a game last week. I think it was, what was it, Thursday? And we projected what the lineup of the Ottawa Senators would look like in perhaps as yep. early as April, right? When yep. you, you potentially have guys like Sanderson coming in, etc. cetera. Um, man... You know, it's it's it sounds ridiculous to say that there may not be a fit for Eric Bradstrom because he's played so well. But can he be your third pairing guy? That yeah. that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. But I'm going to tell you something, Bruce. And I don't know that we've shared this. So I had a general manager last week, maybe ten days ago, uh, ask me about Eric Bradstrom. What do you think? You know, like good guy, those sorts of questions. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's my understanding. So obviously, when when those things 
come my way, well, then yes. you know that there's there's some interest there. So yeah. I, I reached out to one of my senator sources, and you would get the same reaction. It was like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, no, we're not trading Eric Brandstrom. Like, you know, and, and look, that's I felt like this was a, a make or break it year for Eric Brandstrom with the Ottawa Senators. Just developmentally, it felt like they'd invested enough time um, and, and given him enough opportunity at both levels, the NHL and the American League level, and he just didn't seem to get it. You know, the, the defensive weakness in his game was just too significant, too pronounced for him to be the player that Pierre Dorian and the Ottawa Senators thought he was going to be when he made the Mark Stone trade in Vegas. But then you look at, at how his game has taken off this season, and he's breathed new life into his time in Ottawa, in my opinion. So where does he fit? I don't know. I think that's up to Eric Branstrom. Like we can slot him on our depth charts and we can say, well, he's a five, six guy just based on where this kid is going to play or that kid is going to, I'm not so sure about that. Let's see. Let's see what Eric Branstrom can do. Let him decide where he plays. And you know, I did something with Cheryl Pounder on Sunday night and I was saying to her that he's got to make sure he doesn't get bypassed by Jake Sanders. Right. You know, he's yeah, got to exactly. be, if he's going to be at camp next year, he's got to be in, in a competitive mode. Yep. I just want to couple touch on a couple more things before I let you go. One is, yeah, I, no I think we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about what the, you think the Toronto Maple Leafs might do at the deadline. There's been so much discussion yeah. surrounding their goaltending, Darren. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of it comes back to the injury of Jake Muzzin, Bruce. Um, you know, nobody wants to rush Jake Muzzin. He's, he's coming off his second consecutive head injury. The first one, concussion, kept him out <clears throat> the better part of a month. So they're being extra cautious here. Uh, I'm not saying he's not making progress. I hope that he is for Jake's case and, and his family. Uh, he's on LTIR. If he can't come back before the start of the playoffs, then I think Kyle Dubas has some flexibility to be creative. And he's been pretty transparent. He was in meeting with the media and saying bluntly, look, we'd like to add a defenseman. And I think that that's been the case all along. But if if Muzzin's cap is is off the books, they've got roughly 5.6 change to spend, right? So, you know, maybe you get that defenseman. Maybe you add a second defenseman because you're going to need it if Jake Muzzin is a question mark. Uh, or you you do dabble in the goalie market. I guess the issue that I have with that, though, Bruce, is look at the teams that have openly expressed interest in bettering that that role, goaltending, Edmonton, New Jersey. There's some who want to look at Robin Leonard and, and his battle with health with Vegas. Um, and those teams haven't been able to find anybody to come in and stabilize the yeah. job, right? So, yeah. you know, it's not like, you know, Kyle Dubas has a, has a blank check to wave around and say, all right, well, Marc-Andre Fleury, come on, we can take on your cap hit. Uh, it gets pretty complicated. So I think that they've got to hope and pray that Jack Campbell and Peter Morazic are going to figure it out. That has to be their 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 end game. Maybe they got to deal with it in the offseason, but I think that the Toronto Maple Leafs are more focused on adding a quality defenseman. Well, last question for me, and I think one of the things that people expect next season, Darren, is that the Ottawa Senators will be in a playoff position. Um, realistic or not, uh, what, <laughs> I, I, I think... <laughs> Look, they obviously need – we talk enough about goaltending. We talk about goaltending yeah. on the show all the time. But they they need stability in net. But I also wonder what you think they need to add either defensively or up front to make them a playoff <clears throat> contender. Uh, I feel like they, they need to add another piece up front. I do. Yeah. And and look, you know, coaches are always looking at their defensive game and they can always come up with with ideas and scenarios that would make them better. Uh, I think that they're going to have to still be patient with uh, development, both up front and defensively. Uh, I'm a big believer in Jake Sanderson. I know you are too. And I see nothing but really good things in his future. But anybody who thinks he's going to step into the National Hockey League and just automatically be a top-pairing defenseman, I think is being a tad unrealistic. 
You know, yeah. this kid, no different than Kale McCarr in Colorado. I mean, he is going to turn heads because that's what his game is. He's capable of being that. But you have to be patient. And so I don't think that Ottawa is going to pry away from, from that philosophy of being patient with their young developing players. So that also, you know, goes to the forward core with Tim Stutzla, uh, some of the other good young pieces that they've got coming. It feels like if they could add another veteran piece up front, somebody that they could squeeze into their top nine, um, maybe another player with a bit of sandpaper edge to him, not 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 a fighter, just somebody who likes to, to, to play a more power forward role, that that would just give them another layer. That would give them another wave of push. And the guy they've been linked to a lot is Minnesota's Kevin Fiala, who's not going to be yeah. traded, right? He's not going to be traded before no. this deadline. No. Bill Guerin has told teams that, but you know, maybe in the summer when they've yeah. got cap issues, right? Yeah. But, Although, holy smokes, there's a lot of there's. I don't know what's going on with Minnesota right now. I mean, all teams go through peaks and valleys. But I had a conversation with Billy Guerin before they started to go into the funk, and he was like, "You know what? We're good." You know, I, I'm not going to upset the chemistry of this team here by making a trade just for the sake of making a trade. And then here we are, a handful of games later, and he's probably going, Jesus, I need to make a trade. I got to do something to shake this group up. So we'll see what happens. But you're right. When it comes to Fiala and some of their other bigger pieces, probably uh, more cap related in the offseason. Well, hopefully for your sake and uh, all of us who like the trades, they all wait till Monday, March 21st at about 8 a.m. to start making deals, and then they just go on throughout the day. We appreciate your time for Post Media in Ottawa. I'm Bruce Garriock. I'm pleased to be joined today by TSN's Darren Draker. <laughs>